Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today, let's mount an engine. Okay, uh, the wings are done uh, until the servos come in, and that's going to be tomorrow, the 6th of January. It'll be a Monday. Um, the wings are just kind of leaning up against the door right over there. And what we're doing today is we're mounting the motor. Um, I've been at this for a couple hours, um, and I'm going to do a real quick little walkthrough on how I got the measurements uh, before I even started trying to figure out where the motor is going to have to sit in the rails. And it's, it's wooden rails that come on the plane, so you're trying to work with what's already there. And I've uh, never had to do it before, but uh, a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So the very first thing I did was, uh, when I came over here, because you can see the motor's already mounted on it, what I did is I took I took the cowling, put the cowling into position where it needs to be till it was all backed up, and then, because you can see, it fits perfectly. Uh, then I took the, the ruler and put it through the opening, and then went all the way back to the firewall. So what I did was, I just pretty much ran it in like this when it bumped the firewall, then I just done it, went and looked at it, and I, I looked at it, you know, through the metric system. It was 166 uh, millimeters. So what I ended up doing with that um, was I came in up here on the top. This had to be at 166 millimeters to here, to this part, up in the front. And I wanted to stand off about an eighth of an inch, so you got to figure about another three. So that should have come out to be about 169 millimeters. So I measured the length of the motor and I used the backing plate, not the bolts, but the backing plate is an indicator. So I came out, figured out where this was sitting at right now, and this is at uh, 109. So I knew that this had to be 60 millimeters off the firewall. So I came in and that's where the tape is set up. This line right here is 60 millimeters. So seeing that I had these numbers in here, in theory, yeah, sometimes theory works, this should be in, in the proper location sticking out so that way we won't have to make any adjustments on it. So when I came in just a short time ago, slid this up into place where it's going to line up on center because that's where the center is going to be when you put the screws in. And when you look at that, you probably won't be able to see it from there. I'm about three mils, three and a half millimeters off. So that is a good, uh, it's a good length to come out where the prop is going to sit on and give you the gap uh, between the motor and the, uh, which is called the, the prop hub and the, uh, uh, the cowling. So the motor itself is set in. So that part's good. Now the problem I have to jump into next, I've got to get I've got to get the pits muffler put on. So what I'm going to have to do is figure out, I'll, I've got to cut some more of that cheek away because I had to cut some off on the one side you saw on to the GoPro. Um, and that was just so I can get to the adjusting screws. Otherwise I didn't need to cut that side out at all. But I figured instead of drilling holes and then putting a hole in the cowling and then a hole through the, the side of the, the cheek up front on the cowling, just cut that section out. So anyway, so what I have to do is this will have to, because the way it's gonna sit on the side, and I think we may have a problem here, Batman. going to come in on this side like this so what I'm going to have to do is remove a good portion of this enough to give us clearance on the top up here um, and then be able to run through with the bolts and see so this is the uh, this is the last remaining hurdle for the motor so what I'll probably do is I'm going to have to come in and pretty much cut this out from about here from about here across and then we'll loop it down just so that that this can come on and off and it's not going to get in the way of uh, where it's going to be a pain to get the motor out where you've got to take this off first to try to drop the motor down. So I'm, we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to cut out what we need to. And so you know what I did? I made a template. All right. I came in, um, took the pitch muffler. I went ahead and, sorry about that, 
put it put it on a piece of cardboard, traced it out, and then I expanded it by almost another quarter inch around the outside. So you can see the inside figure over here where I traced it, made it a little bit bigger. So that way it gives me plenty of room for this to get in. And because we've got heat very close to balsa, you know what I'm saying. So anyway, so I had to go ahead. I, I measured the holes out, punched them through. That's where the bolts will come through here. So that way I've got another place from which to measure. So you can see I drew everything up. So I've got my cross pattern. Now, back over to the fuselage. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you. So I showed it to you once, but the record button wasn't on. So anyway, let me show you what I had to do. So I came on in and wherever I did with the template, there we go. I took the motor, flipped the motor upside down, traced around the outside of it, and then what I did is I, I, I went around it and added almost another quarter inch. So I just I increased the size of the footprint that this is going to leave on it. While it was sitting up on top here, I went through, poked some holes in it so I've got good indication of where this line is. Then up here on the fuselage, sorry about that, up here on the fuselage, uh, I came across this top line was the top of the exhaust port. This line right here was a measurement down for the bolt hole from the top of the exhaust port. Yeah, I, I, I'm getting a little bit crazy with this. So anyway, uh, from there I went ahead and got this lined up because you can see I've got some marks drawn on it. So once I get these lines marked up, I just went around the outside and just traced it. And then this piece here, I terminated off early, so this will come cut in here and then go up. I mean, I could come straight across if I wanted to, and I may, um, just to get away from anywhere, and I probably will from where the throttle is. I'll bring it up high. Uh, and then it's going to sweep down around the back. Right now, I've got this coming straight down. The way that this pipe, the pipe is going to go on, let me see if I can get it lined up relatively nice, and we'll find out later on. As you can see, there's going to be interference between the tips, the down pipes, and this part of the front of the fuselage, that's the part of the firewall. So what we'll do is when I get everything on there and see how it wants to fit, if I just come in here with the Dremel tool or whatever and just grind a section of this out just for this to go in place, that'll be fine because all of this, all the way up to the landing gear, the leading edge of the landing gear, is covered by the cowling. So when this goes on anyway, what I'm gonna be doing is this part here, it's a C-shape, that's gonna get cut out. Um, and that's just so that when the air comes in on the fresh air side of the cowling, it's gonna exit right here, right down at the bottom. So, and I'm hoping that the way this is set up, I'm not gonna have to cut another hole for that exhaust. That's my whole thing. I'm hoping that this exhaust is gonna fit. Doubtful, but I think it's gonna fit, maybe. Okay, we've got the cutout. Had a little blast out of uh, balsa on the inside. And even though, yes, I did say it was non-structural, it is gonna have a little bit of structure to it with this little piece of, it's not even eighth inch balsa. It's probably like, uh, I don't know, 330 seconds balsa. So what I'm gonna do is before this thing get, ever gets started up, I'm gonna come in with some, probably a couple strips of quarter ply. Just come in here and uh, just put some L brackets on the inside and then uh, I can screw them from the inside of the firewall out and from the top down. So we'll glue it and screw it and uh, that'll add any extra support that we may have lost because I can bring these from about here, here all the way on out to the outside. So they can be, uh, so there'll be something in here just to help, just, just to help. Here's how it's gonna come on, and it is standing a little bit proud, so I think it's gonna end up bumping the cowling. So if we have to open up a little bit of the side, we have to, we don't have a choice. Um, so I went ahead, and you can see, I already kinda just scratched in where I'm gonna have to remove material. And it's not gonna be a whole heck of a lot, so, uh, so I'll just go in. I probably won't have to come all the way back to this line, but I'll just come in with the Dremel and, and a little little grindy thing and uh, get some of this stuff buzzed out and I'll bring it back as soon as that gets uh, as soon as I can screw that on all right I kind of jumped ahead on doing the cowling mount uh, so you guys didn't see this part of it 
Down here on the bottom, you can see where I, I had to do the relief cutout just for the downpipes for the exhaust. This will probably be opened up more, but I needed to go ahead and cut this out to slide it back far enough so that we can get the part of the muffler that we're going to have to cut a little teeny hole in here because I don't know if you can see it. You're getting close. If you can see the little crack in the fiberglass right there, that's where the front bolt, the front mounting bolt is. I can't feel the back one, so the back one should be fine and it'll be right about in this location. I'm going to start this off small. I can always make it bigger. It's a lot harder to make it smaller. So this is set up so that you can see that's the clearance I've got around the outside, which should be more than sufficient. So I don't think I'm gonna have to make it any bigger than this. So I'm making sure that I'm just a little bit smaller than that size. I, I throttle it down about maybe a 16th of an inch all the way around. I'm not 100% on this vertical part on how I wanna bring this one in. So uh, that again will be left short. I'll, I'll probably shorten it up before I even get all the way out to it. Um, just to kind of figure out how we're gonna do this. So what I'm gonna do is through that camera there, I'm gonna hopefully not get too much in the way of the camera. I'm gonna go ahead and backtrack this whole thing to show you how I got this little template set up because I had to stand it proud to clear the, the, uh, the actual cowling the way it stands off. So uh, you guys may have seen this happen before through uh, you know YouTube builders. You can go ahead and, and super glue these things onto balsa just as long as you use masking tape underneath it. So that way you're gluing to the masking tape, not to the balsa. So, all right, so let me go ahead and uh, back this all up. All right, so let me go ahead. And at this point, seeing that we know what we're going to be kind of grinding out, let me go ahead and slide this off the front. Now, here... This is the muffler, and what I did on the top of this, I used a reamer and reamed the holes out big enough in the cardboard so that it fit down right where the bolts were uh, on the muffler. Um, so, this is the part we're trying to cut out, and I think I only need to go back to about here, to this part right here on it, because I don't need to cut the whole thing open. I, I want to leave, I want to leave as little cut out around the muffler as possible on the cowling just so it's going to look better because I think the black may be coming across uh, I'm thinking it'll probably come from about here oops sorry there we go the black will probably come from about here all the way back so then we'll have a little gradient down here on the bottom uh, we're gonna have the yellow and then the black muffler coming through but you know that's just the way it goes so this piece here can come off and then we'll go ahead and we'll lift this whole piece up just by pulling up. And there we go. So you can see where, where the super glue was to hold it into place. And, you know, Bob's your uncle. It's done. So, all right, so let me go ahead and I will get this all ground out and I'll be using a uh, Dremel. There we go. I'll come in with it with a, a, with a cutoff wheel. Uh, cut a section out and then it's just uh, you know, whatever I think that's the I think that's the 120 grit and uh, We'll just come in. and We'll grind it out slowly About the light That's the ceiling right there. So anyway, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tilt the camera down a little bit I'm gonna show you because if you've never done it before um, How you go ahead and, and you grind your way through a through a, uh, a cowling and not hack it up because I've hacked up plenty in my day so anyway Always have one of these things when you're grinding fiberglass. It's just anything that you keep out of your lungs, it's gonna help you out in the long run. There we go.
is pretty much, sorry about that, that's pretty much how you do it. And what you want to do is you want to get close to the line. You don't want to cut the line. Um, the little fuzzies on the inside, what I'll do is when it's all finalized, so you can see me, there we go. Um, when it's all, sorry about that, I'm probably hitting my mic. Let me get this off. I probably was hitting the mic. So anyway, all right, so that's pretty much how you do it. It's relatively easy. Uh, when you come in, um, try not to hit the your taped lines. Um, always leave a little bit there because once again, it's always easier to take more off than to add more on. Uh, the little fuzzies on the inside that you can see, what I'll do with those is when I get it out to the final size and everything fits well, I'll just take some thin CA, come on the inside of it and just wick it around the outside. And then when those things, when the CA hardens those things up, just come in with some sandpaper, you know, maybe like some 320 grit sandpaper. Just go ahead and just sand it off and it's done. It works out real nice. So let me get this thing on and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, it actually came out pretty decent. I am very close over on this side because it is centered. So this is centered, so this is gonna be the final location. Uh, up front here, I'm close down on this corner, but I did not use the small little one. I was using the big round ones, so I used the small little one just to come in, just to get this a little bit farther away. I'm still debating what I wanna do with that. I think I'm just gonna leave this one just where it is. I've got clearance of probably eh, three thirty seconds maximum. Um, I mean, it's tight, but I don't think there's gonna be an issue there because what we're gonna have is when this thing's running, we're gonna be not only having air coming in here to help cool the motor, air that's gonna be coming past this should keep this portion up here really cool. Uh, because the only thing I could do is if I wanted to I can go ahead and drop this a little bit farther back But I'm kind of hemming and hawing I think I'll leave it the way it is for now uh, when it comes time uh, Just before I paint it if I want to go ahead and move it back I can I am NOT Interested in that logo. It does me no good But uh, yeah, so there we go. So we got uh, a little over an eighth of an inch clearance all the way around on the outside so I'll grind this out and then I'll come on in uh, I'll finalize it get it all dressed up glue it and then we're gonna call this part done and that's really with the exception of just having to cut this out it's a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be okay it's been almost a full day of just trying to get that engine and yeah I did call it an engine for those that every time I call it a motor they get upset and I know who you are you do know we drive cars on motorways. We have motorcycles, motorbikes, motor cars. Of course, you could say, hey, yeah, a Tesla's a motor car. It's got an electric motor in it. Anyway, uh, back to the plane. So, as you can kind of see, it's all done. The engine motor uh, is all fully installed, and the cowling is almost completely uh, taken care of. I just have to... Uh, uh, go ahead with the thin CA, wick around it, and then sand it down. Uh, what I've got around it is about a little bit less than a quarter inch gap. Um, and I think that'll be fine the way the air flows in past it, and it can get pulled in alongside of it. Uh, and plus, the main intake is, uh, is right back here, right up in front of it. So I don't think there's going to be an issue. So anyway, let me, uh, let me grab the GoPro, and we'll do a quick little walk around. All right, uh, these two little pieces of uh, masking tape, this is where the CG is right now. Here's where the CG is supposed to be. So you can see we're probably about three and a half inches uh, forward of where it needs to be. Now this motor itself, uh, it is heavy. What they originally designed this for, I believe was for a four stroke because they say a 90 to 120 size. For a fifth scale biplane, you're not gonna put a 90 size two stroke or 120 size two stroke and it would be insane so i'm hoping that they were working around uh, uh 90 120 size four stroke which is pretty darn near close to the weight of that thing so it, so it, the whole plane may be designed around it now you, you now you do realize i did lighten the tail so we'll see how well that comes into uh effect I, hopefully i don't have to put any lead in the tail what i plan on trying to do up here to move the weight balance back because right here of course is the servo bay I want to see if I can mount this fuel tank in sideways because the way it's set up, it's right in the middle. I can do it. 
So if I can get this set up so it's sitting sideways, I think I can come down here, build a shelf right above the right above the wing, um, and then have this slide in and mount it on top of it. It's going to be a pain in the butt getting it in and out, but if I put some screws or some attachments or something on this shelf, I could put two little strips down here and then just put screws down from the top down along the inside. So I may have to do that for this. I haven't I haven't got to that point yet. For the power. I got one of these little things. It's a miracle switch, and uh, I've never had one fail, so I can't say that it's a miracle if it works. You can see that this will fit, and it will fit in that slot real nice. It does hang down a little bit lower than this part, but the way this piece slides in, it should sit. Let's see if I can do it. Just to get it started. It will sit proud of that so if I can get it set up so you can still slide it in and have it sit like this um, we'll be good on that so I'm gonna make a template for this because that's what I do and then see how well it's gonna line up here and what I'm gonna have to cut out it, the, the thing is it's not that this is gonna be the hard part well, there's foam all up inside there so I'll have to come in and uh, get rid of the foam I may come in and do it with a uh, soldering iron um, just so that way I'm going to make less mess when I make the initial cut and then just try to take it out in chunks. Um, I just need it up here on this top piece. Uh, the rest can stay. So that's probably what will happen with that. Now, with the motor. Here's what I was talking about. We've got that gap. I've got to do a little bit of a cleanup still. Uh, so, but with all the, even though this part here is tight, if I've got to cut it back a little bit more, I will. It's not touching, but I may have to go ahead and bring this down a little bit more and then bring it down this way. So uh, so if I do have to cut this farther back, we'll see how it goes. All right, up front, uh, here is your, sorry about that, here's your choke lever. So you kick it down, get it to pop, and then just come and reach in, pop up with your thumb, and then go ahead and start it, you're good to go. I had to make this little cutout for the carb, and I didn't want to make it any bigger than it is because the opening to the carb is right behind it, so I don't want a whole lot of air flowing past it. So um, that's just to make room uh, in the front so that the cowling can fit on right. Now what I did with the cowling, and I'll show you, and I'll show you why I did it first. If you can see how it stands proud, how there's just slightly standoff, um, it gives it for a better rounder structure all the way uh, around the top of the cowling because it's going to be held together with these little screws right here. So what I did was I took some 16th balsa, got it wet, and came over and just glued it into place. So I put some thick CA behind it and I had a piece of green tape right along this edge here so I knew how to get it properly lined up. Um, just put it on there, started with my starting point, went to the other side, and then just held it. And then as soon as it started sticking, hit it with some kicker. So and then I just come in with some thin CA to go ahead and stiffen up the wood. And uh, we should be good with that one. So anyway, I think we can call this a video. Um, I've still got a lot of little fudging to do uh, just to get to the next point. Because I know how I pretty much want to run my throttle cable through because the way it's kind of come in, it's probably going to have to snake its way through just because of where it comes out. Um, so what I may do is I do have some stainless steel cable uh, down below. I've got like a 500 foot roll of it. And I do have some uh, some old antenna line, the yellow antenna line or the clear stuff that it slides through. It's a perfect fit, slides right through. So I'll probably set that up so it's the push pull for the throttle is going to be uh, on that stuff. And then, uh, yeah, so it's just the uh, what to do with the fuel tank. And uh, that's pretty much the hardest part about what I got to do on the inside. And before I go, I did dig into my stash of carbon fiber, and this is the thin carbon fiber tube. It's, uh, I can measure it. I mean, I can get you a measurement on it. It's probably about a hundred thousandths. It's probably like, at the most, maybe three mil. Um, so, and that's tubing. So I can go ahead and make the push pull uh, um, for the ailerons, for the connector rod from the top to the bottom. So that's what this is going to be made out of. I'll use this and then some brass and I'll show you how I do that when the time comes, which is not going to be for probably several weeks anyway. So, so anyway, that's about it. So, 
let's just call this a video and I'll see you guys next time I'm down in the shop.